Hey guys, Gemma from ASD Rocks. Um, oh my God, I came in here with, oh, that's right, with like a totally specific thing that I wanted to talk to you about and then I couldn't remember what the hell it was. Okay, so um, something happened this weekend. Ma massive, massive. Um, really interesting too, actually, the more I think about it. So we've been having um, problems, as you know. <laughs> I've been having personal issues, personal troubles, just, you know, feeling like or trying to feel myself. But um, it's been really, really affecting me in in an emotional capacity, like how how Bo is doing at school and how things are going at school, um, you know, and whether he's going to be able to manage or not and all those sorts of things. And it's just been um, overwhelming with the NDIS um, rejection of the review uh, and trying to work out, you know, how to get him the help. What is that? There is this kind of noise going on and it's not the fridge <laughs> but there's this sort of almost it's it's actually a lovely noise I don't know what noise it is but it's, it's actually quite lovely sorry um talk about getting sidetracked so one of the things that's been stressing me out really really badly is that and I, again I've had to explain it to the to the teachers was that when you know everything's <laughs> evolution everything is evolution no matter where you are in your journey with your autistic child it is all evolution and um what is that sounds like someone's ringing like a chime um maybe i'm hallucinating <laughs> could be very it's very highly possible for me but it really does sound like, because I just got for my birthday this amazing singing bowl, which is absolutely divine, just to, but I'm hearing this ringing in my ear at the moment. It's definitely not me doing, because my singing bowl is sitting right next to me. Okay, cut. It, oh, it is my singing bowl. Oh, it is. It's echoing me. Oh my God, that's hysterical. I have to show you. And then I'll get round to why now i understand why this is happening i was so confused so for my birthday i got uh this singing bowl that's what the noise is and it's responding so the idea of a singing bowl i'm going to try and do this in front of someone i've never done it before but actually supposed to be a very very healing all these sorts of vibrational ways blah 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 you know I went all mental when I had my complete my utter breakdown during COVID and tried to find spiritual harmony um this was more money I spent on finding spiritual harmony yay <laughs> but I just realized that it's actually because it sits on this little piece of rubber what it's doing is it's picking up when I make a certain frequency in my own voice um, and it was bouncing off that door, which is why I could hear this ringing. Oh, that's hysterical. Oh, it's like an opera singer. Sorry. Okay, four minutes in and I've so far spoken utter crap. But you guys know me, so that's pretty normal. All right. Um, there it is again. The evolution. This is this is the, 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 the talking about the evolution and how... We don't see, you know, when we're presented with this massive problem, like a diagnosis, here is your child, you have a diagnosis. Um, and when I say problem, I don't mean the child at all. I mean, like when you're overwhelmed and you have no idea what step to take first. And when Bo was um, what we categorized back then as severe, um, non-verbal, uh, wasn't, wasn't, uh, you know, responding to his name, not toileted, wasn't eating. I mean, all those sorts of things. Uh, part of our journey was 
because he had such behavioral issues and he, because of because he got triggered so easily and because he was nonverbal, he would have these meltdowns. I mean, they were just horrendous. They were meltdowns where he, because he couldn't communicate and if things didn't go his way or if he wanted something or whatever it happened to be, uh, he, he would melt down to the point of vomiting and then eventually passing out. There was just no stopping it. The only stopping it was actually preempting it. And by preempting it, we were able to um, sort of stop it before it got too bad by trying to understand, you know, who, who, you know, what it was he wanted, what he needed, what the triggers were and those sorts of things. So it was about me understanding him, learning him, finding out what his triggers were and what and, and how to how to recognize those things. And also he would give verbal prompts well before he had these massive make breakdowns. Usually complete breakdowns, they don't come out of the blue when this is, unless there's like, you know, some huge dog coming at you or something, you know, they, they're a build up, a build up of the inability to tolerate. Oh, don't think I'm going to be a Buddhist anytime soon. Sorry, dude. Unga gung gung gung. Oops. Fuck. Karma. <laughs> Um, so they, they would, um, you, you would recognize these, these sort of, Bo would give these trigger noises. He would do this really, really, it was quite high pitched squeal, but it was really soft. And if I heard that, I knew, I knew there's, there's a meltdown coming, you know, what's happening, look around, what's going on, what's causing this trigger. Normally as a parent, you're pretty good. You know what's going on. So you're able to sort of remove your child from that. And, and that was the only way of coping at that time when he was that young, was removing him directly from what was causing, I'm going to keep this bowl around with me all the time and just talk and listen to it sing back to me. This is awesome. I'm going to start talking to inanimate objects all the time. So um, we would remove him or I would remove him. And then as he became, as he got older, as he became more verbal over years and years and years, uh, and then finally sort of getting in, in, you know, old enough, we're talking, you know, I'm, I'm talking about five years of evolution here. Uh, we started teaching him to recognize those triggers for himself and remove himself so that he'd be, you know, a lot more, um, well, what would we call it? A uh, self, self, moderation, self-evaluation, um, independence, that sort of thing. So what happened was uh, we we started to teach him, you know, if there's a trigger, if there's something that's making you feel uncomfortable, if there's something that's making you feel um, like you're going to have this meltdown, there's usually a feeling before that and recognize that feeling before it gets too much get up, remove yourself from that situation because by the time you get to meltdown, you can't stop a meltdown. You've gone too far. It's, it's like anything. If you're burning a piece of paper, there's a point where you can put it out, you can put it out, you can put it out. There's a certain point that you pass and it's that's it. The page is gone. It goes up into flames. There's, you know, it's just, it's too much. No matter how much you stomp on it and do whatever, the paper's burnt and that's the end of that. So we got, we taught him slowly how to self monitor, self manage. And my very first experience of an unperceived backlash of that was when he was in mainstream uh, primary school. And we were, we, I mean, you've got to remember, we were so proud, like, look at us, we're, we're, we're self-managing, you know, it was almost like complete meltdowns were a thing of the past and it had taken five years to get there at least and of hard, hardcore work. And so we, he would have been in around about grade five, I would say, at um, primary school and the teacher said, okay, we're going to do lightning maths. And Bo just got up and said, this gives me anxiety. I'm out of here. And he just got up and left. And the teacher was like, what do I do? 
you what do I do? One do I go after the autistic child who's just gotten up and literally left my class? Or do I stay here with like the 25 other kids? Like, what do I do? So we delve, we, 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 you know, obviously I was contacted and we came up with a plan and the plan was that lightning maths, uh, to Bo was, uh, gave him extreme anxiety because the idea of getting anything wrong was worse than, than, you know, having the time to work it out. He just couldn't bear getting it wrong. So, uh, with it being lightning, he didn't have time to work it out. So we worked out that, for everything else, he could do his maths like everybody else, but for lightning rounds, he could have a calculator. And it was just a way of managing that anxiety, but keeping him in a mainstream environment. We haven't really had too many issues since then. When he transferred over to year seven to high school, we had another instance like this. And it turned out that he kept leaving science. He would leave the science lab. He was too scared that the Bunsen burners, the gas in the Bunsen burners, um, the amount of gas was, was toxic to him. So when they went to turn the Bunsen burner on or, or, or you know, light the Bunsen burner, he, he would just leave. He couldn't bear the idea. He thought that the amount of gas in there um, with everybody's Bunsen burner and whatnot uh, burning or, and he still has a little anxiety about this, but he was missing out on a huge amount of experiments that were really, really important. And so we ended up having to sit down with him again. You know, these things are cyclical. And again, I say evolution, guys, evolution is not, oh, I've grown legs and now I know how to walk. It's, oh, but you still have to learn not to walk into the fire. And then it's, oh, we still need to learn that when I take a step, this hurts or that hurts. So evolution is not like phase one, complete two, three. And we never, you know, the, the thing about when we're trying to teach our kids these behavioral changes to avoid something that's so horrific, like a complete and utter meltdown, we're trying, you know, that's no matter what, we don't want to go back to that. So if Bo has to walk out of a class because he's getting anxiety, it's still better than, you know, flopping down on the floor of, of the science room and having a complete breakdown, which, you know, we, we have rarely these days, rarely, and certainly not to the point where when he was nonverbal because he's able to, ex oh, except a couple of years ago when COVID first came in and I didn't quite have myself sorted out yet for him so so then we we went forward and we did the mathematics on the size of the room how much oxygen was in the room how much um you know uh how much time how much gas was released and how much time it would take to fill the room up with that amount of of gas that would cause an issue for the children. We also went through OH&S and how teachers aren't allowed to asphyxiate their children and that these, these experiments, and he still has massive anxiety about it, but throughout year seven and year eight, we had to work really hard. The rule was, because he was just leaving class, leaving class, leaving class, and it was getting to the point where he just wasn't, he wasn't in any classes. So we, we, we went through that, we tackled that problem. And then the rule was in science, if you're not feeling comfortable, you don't have to do the experiment, but you do have to stay in the room. If you're feeling really uncomfortable, buddy up with someone else while they do the experiment. If you're feeling more uncomfortable than that, buddy up with the teacher and let them do the experiment or show the experiment, or, but you have to stay in the room. So now we are in year 10 and uh, we are doing psychology and they are dealing at the moment very, very intensely with uh, the nervous system, the brain, how, you know, the hemispheres, um, the, the uh, sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, uh, which part of the brain is uh, responsible for speech, which part is responsible for this and that. And I've been dealing with, oh, I wish I should have, oh, I've probably got it on here, I could read. I've been dealing with his psychology teacher who has been 
phenomenal because she's communicating with me. Communication, guys, it's the key. Like, if you communicate with me, I can communicate with Bo. We can create this triangle of support and it all works well. It's when they're not communicating with me or I seem to be com communicating to a blank wall uh, that we have these massive issues. And the responsibility I feel on my shoulders where you know, I'm trying to, or I know my child and I know how they're going to react and I know what's going to go on and I'm trying to speak to you about it. And, you know, you're not, you're not coming back to me. So I'm trying to warn you about what's, you know, this is the theme of my life. I tell, I, I constantly am warning people about, you know, if you do this, 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 and this will happen. This is not me just guessing. This is not me reading the future. I'm telling you, if you do this, 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 and this will happen. And I guess it's everybody's life journey to, to, you know, have to go through that and not listen to the warnings and me screaming and jumping up and down and saying, I promise you, you will save yourself so much pain and heartache if you, you know, if you, if you listen to what I'm saying, I promise you, you know, it's not going to be good. The outcome's not going to be good or it's, the outcome is going to be great if we do this, this, this and this. Um, my learning path is has been allowing other people to not only fuck up themselves but fuck up my world because they won't listen to me and I can only protect myself. Um, so I've been working with Bo's a psychology teacher and one of the things is that he seems to be she she wrote to me and she was like he's getting up and he's excusing himself from these videos because we all know Bo does not watch movies so she said he's leaving he's getting up and he's leaving and he's not watching these videos and there's massive content in there there's really important content in there that we then spend the rest of the thing talking about the rest of the lesson talking about and he's not in there and he doesn't see it so I had a chat with Bo and then I had a chat with her and we all sort of spoke about, you know, how we could get around it. And one of the things that we did, which was really clever on her behalf, was she sent me all the videos that they were going to be watching throughout the week so that we could watch them. Also, I've got him a psychology tutor to help him sort of, uh, because bug it if I know what spatial neglect is. Oh, I do now, uh, but uh, I, I didn't and it was driving me insane because of an issue that happened during the week with Bo and him telling me he couldn't do his homework because the questions were loaded. I lost my shit because sometimes my trigger points are just, you know, they're just not as, sometimes they're here and sometimes they're here and, you know, I'm just not the perfect mum. Sometimes I've just got too much on my shoulders for, you know, him to turn around to me and say, oh, my, my, my psychology homework, you know, I'm not doing, I'm not doing it because the questions are loaded. No, does my ass look fat in this is a loaded question. Um, <laughs> uh, what is the effects of spatial neglect in this? Da, 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 da. That's not a loaded question. They just want, it's, it's a full question. It really wanted, give us example of this, this, this. Anyway, videos, we got back to the videos. So comes, uh, what day was it? It was Friday and she had sent us home the videos that they're going to be watching this week. And I got, I was, I had just gotten my delivery from, uh, from the supermarket and he was sitting down talking with his, uh, psychology tutor who is absolutely just the most gorgeous most amazing girl they get along he's like showing his personality they're laughing she's really worked out how to get the absolute most out of Bo uh, and you know it, it's fantastic because not only is he getting psychology but he's also kind of getting social uh, learning how to be social with someone that's different it's brilliant so all of a sudden, because I'm in the kitchen and they're just in the lounge room and they're watching, you know, they're going to go through these videos together so that there's prep work there for when they watch the, so he doesn't have to get up and leave the room. And all of a sudden, I just hear her say, do you want a glass of water? And he says, I think I'm going to be sick. Um, and I stopped because I don't, I'm, I'm not listening in 
on what they're doing all the time. You know, I'm like putting all the freezing, freezing stuff away and then I want to get out of the area so that they can have their space and time. And I look over at Bo and he is sheet white, lips, no color, nothing. And I walk over and I said, what's going on? Are you okay? And they'd been watching this video and he goes, I think I'm going to be sick. I just think I'm going to be sick. And I went, okay. And I felt him and he had those cold sweats. Anyway, he, he passed out basically. We had to lie him down and get his feet above his head. Um, now this comes down to Bo and his personality. His imagination takes things. And it's similar to me. Like if pain happens to me, if I, if I tear my own fingernail off, which I've done in the past accidentally, obviously not on purpose, I've had the whole thing t- torn off. Now I know exactly how much pain I'm going through and I can monitor that. But if it happens to someone else, I have no concept of how much pain there is. So my 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 uh, imagination takes over and just thinks it's just the worst possible amount of pain on earth. So he ends up on the floor, pale as a ghost, getting all his, you know, vision back and, you know, I've got him a glass of water, got him a cookie, his feet are above his head. And the tutor says, oh, well, we were watching something about brain surgery. And I said, oh, my God, okay, well, if you're watching brain surgery, that's totally fine. I said, you know what? Other people would pass out about that too. And he says, oh, well, it wasn't exactly brain surgery. Apparently he was sitting there like this trying to monitor it, like, you know, like this. He said, I tried to shield myself. Anyway, once once we managed to get a little bit of colour back in and, and um, was checking, you know, his blood flow um, and how much was coming back and we got him sitting up and we got him back into the chair. It turns out it was actually, yes, it, they were talking about brain surgery. They didn't see any brain surgery, but they were, um, they went into an operating theater and I think Bo's imagination literally just took over and it all became too graphic for him. And he literally just passed out from the concept of this brain surgery because this it was talking about this person that had an entire hemisphere removed and that only only w- working on one hemisphere in, and living with one hemisphere of their brain. Uh, so I I wrote to it, it. It really the point of this story is that it really showed me that him excusing himself from these situations. You know, sometimes I get really frustrated, really angry, really annoyed, and quite blasé about it. And I sort of like like come on, dude, it's schoolwork. And you really need to be in the class and watch this stuff. And Bo doesn't often remove himself if he doesn't feel, you know, but it is very much a blanket rule. So it's like, oh, TV, video, no, not watching it. I'm too emotional. I don't want to see it. And so he throws this blanket rule over everything. So, if you know, if they pull out a video, he's like, I'm leaving. And then I start saying, you know, because it's been so many years since it's actually been a problem. And then all of a sudden I see that he actually does pass out and that it is too intense for him. And, you know, lucky that lucky that we were watching these at home because I wrote to his uh, psychology teacher and I said, you know, if Bo, um, if Bo wants to leave himself, excuse himself from the room for this particular uh video whatever it happens to be I think we should you know give him give him a pass for this one because he literally passed out and maybe I was being less maybe I was being less sensitive maybe she and I were being less sensitive to how how sensitive he is to these sorts of things that he he wasn't just excusing himself for the fear of oh you know I don't want to see something or I don't want to get too emotionally involved he actually knows himself and he actually does know that you know it's not just a small thing for him it's it's really big so to his credit he sat back up and went through the rest of the video and they went through the rest of the videos for the week so he's all prepped and she's coming again this week um uh, earlier though, so we've changed it because it wasn't helping her coming on a Friday because they'd already done all the work. Um, so we've changed her to coming uh, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And that way um, she can work with him on the homework, which I'm struggling, like really, really struggling to do with him because I'm not in the classroom and I, you know, I don't know 
necessarily all of the um, how to answer the schoolwork questions. So my point is this, Bo, this evolution of Bo getting up and asking to remove himself from an uncomfortable situation, he's thrown a blanket over it that, and that we're trying to push through. But sometimes that blanket protection is actually there because it's still a genuine problem. He's not just making things up. Or It's not that I thought he was making it up. I just thought he wasn't giving it a go. I just, you know, and, and that he had to because if you didn't watch these videos, he wasn't going to be a part of understanding what they were learning in class. So, but then having him pass out, literally pass out and on the floor um, from one of these videos that didn't even show anything except for an operating theatre, you know, it puts it all in, into a, a bit of perspective and it sort of took me down a peg or two where I've been quite strict and saying, well, you know, you can't do this and you have to stay in the class for that and you have to stay in, you know, and I was, I was, I was, because it's been so long since we've had any kind of incident, I was starting to get really blasé about it and it's just really taken me down a peg and reminded me, I can't get blasé with this. This We are still on this evolution. There are going to be science experiments. There are going to be things that are going to make him uncomfortable. And the question is, you know, can he monitor the, how uncomfortable he is um, before he ends up passing out or throwing up or doing something like that? But uh, it was a massive shake up for me. And I really, it was a kick in the pants, to be truthful. And I really had to sort of look at it and say, geez, um, I need to stop being so harsh on him and realize how well he's doing and how hard he's trying and let the school know that maybe there are circumstances that he does need uh, to excuse himself from the room. And his teacher completely agreed. She asked what, you know, well, absolutely, which one was it? If he leaves the room for it, we're perfectly happy for him to do that. She was just as astounded as I was. Um, so I think one of the biggest things that I have learned from this, uh, that hopefully you can sort of take pieces of, of these, these things that I learn and apply them to your own situations and your own worlds where you sort of learn from my mistakes or learn from my learning is that the best thing that I have done for so far for year 10, 11 and 12 is to get the stuff, get the actual um, curriculum, get the and, and videos and the broken down units and go through them before he goes through them in class and sort of identify any areas we think he's going to have trouble with. And then, and then, you know, make sure that we cover those areas at home first in a safe environment where he feels most comfortable and not exposed or vulnerable, where he's going to pass out in front of school friends, teachers, whoever it is. So yeah, a uh, big learning curve for me this weekend, massive learning curve for me. Uh, you know, the, my, my two lessons this week is do not get in a random car for an Uber. <laughs> and that Bo, uh, you know, Bo still feels just as intensely as he did when he was having his massive, massive major breakdowns and meltdowns. It's just he's expressing it now and because I'm so used to it, I'm dismissing it and I shouldn't. And that is that is a huge lesson for me. So I hope you guys can take my, uh, my mistake and my lessons and apply them to your life and, and realize that Maybe now that they're a little bit more verbal doesn't mean that they don't feel things just as intently. And, and if they do warn us and if they are doing things and say, no, I can't or whatever, we tend to get, you know, over a period of time, we tend to get really blasé about that. And it's like, yes, you can. And, you know, we just need to find the right way to do it or whatever. Sometimes, no, they can't. You know, uh, we forget. I forgot. I forgot. Uh how intensely he feels things and you know I've been so stressed out about getting him through and pushing him through that I removed myself from from how he feels and into a 
you know, right, well, how are we going to get through this? Not, you know, far less than from an empathetic point of view of how's Bo going to get through this? And I know I've questioned myself, who am I doing this for? Am I doing this for him? Am I doing this for, you know, and all of those sorts of things. But I think I lost sight. I really lost sight of the main person, which is Bo there and his communication to me. And I saw it as a challenge. How am I going to get through this? You know, he's leaving, he's not communicating. Instead of actually seeing it as, you know, oh my gosh, my baby, like he put himself through all that and ended up literally passing out because I just was less inclined to sort of, I don't know, listen to him. So that's, that's, that's a big learning lesson for me, guys. And I, I hope you can learn from it too. ASD rocks.